and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Here they are. And what is written of them in verse 5? And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So in our study as to who the 144,000 are, they are a people that stand perfected without fault. When do these people begin to be to come to fruition? When are these people, what are the circumstances and the timing of such a people coming into existence? We turn to Revelation chapter 7. And there we read in verses 1 to 4. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. We will let the spirit of prophecy amplify this scripture here for us. This is not a man's appreciation. This is what the spirit of prophecy reveals to us, the testimony of Jesus. And it's in early writings, reading there from page 38, to help us understand the quote that we've been reading in the Bible here. She says, I saw four angels who had a work to do on the earth and were on their way to accomplish it. Jesus was clothed with priestly garments. He gazed in pity on the remnant, then raised his hands and with a voice of deep pity cried, my blood, Father, my blood, my blood, my blood. Then I saw an exceeding bright light come from God who sat upon the great white throne and was shed all about Jesus. Then I saw an angel with a commission from Jesus swiftly flying to the four angels who had a work to do on the earth and waving something up and down in his hand and crying with a loud voice, Hold, 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 hold until the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. I asked my accompanying angel the meaning of what I heard and what the four angels were about to do. He said to me that it was God that restrained the powers and that he gave his angels charge over the things on the earth, that the four angels had power from God to hold the four winds that they were about to let them go. But while their hands were loosening, 
the four winds were about to blow, the merciful eye of Jesus gazed on the remnant that were not sealed. And in one of the statements previous to this, which was copied into early writings, which they've missed out, which were not all sealed. And he raised his hands to the Father and pleaded with him that he had spilled his blood for them. Then another angel was commissioned to, sw to fly swiftly to the four angels and bid them hold until the servants of God were sealed with the seal of the living God in their foreheads. So what we are seeing here is that there is a prolonging of the return of Jesus as he waits for the people's sanctification to be completed. It's not yet finished. They are not yet without fault. And so he says, Father, my blood, I want my blood to continue to work for them, to, to wash them clean and to finally bring them forth pure as gold to graduate without fault. And the experience of this is mapped out very clearly in the book Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. What Jesus is doing for the people who are to stand before him without fault. It's Malachi chapter 3 <clears throat> and reading there verses 1 to 3. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who shall abide when he shall appear, when he appeareth? Who shall abide? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Jesus here is identified in the last days, to be a refiner and a purifier of the children of God. And as he is doing this work to prepare them to stand a holy people, we are appreciating here that we are called upon to cooperate with him. Our character, our trust in God, our obedience to everything he says, as we identified in our previous divine services, to live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Jesus is laboring, purifying us, taking us through experiences that feel like fire. Have you felt it? Have we felt the fire of purification in our experience? This is the preparation of a people that shall be without sin. Until they are sealed in their foreheads. What is involved we come to 2 Corinthians. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> 
2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. To be these people, our part, that we are involved in, is to so behold the glory of God, his character, so that we would be changed into the same character, from character to character. And we recall that, that that is God's character, his glory, when we read Exodus 33, verse 18 and 19, and 34, 5 to 7, when Moses asked God to show him his glory. So what did God do? Yes, indeed, he said, all right, I'm going to show you my glory. I'm going to hide you in a cleft of a rock put my hand over you and walk past you. And as he did that, he called out his character, the Lord, in his beautiful character as described there in, in uh, Exodus 34, 5 to 7. His glory is his character is his holiness. The 144,000 are to be sealed in their forehead. Let's have another look at what we read there in Revelation 14 verse 1. What is to be in their forehead? Revelation 14.1 And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having what in their foreheads? Having his father's name written in their foreheads. In the Bible, a name was given to describe something. You know what the name was given for? To describe the character. Jacob, his name was Jacob, which was supplanter. And then when he had gone through his purifying experience, he was called Israel because he conquered in his battle. The Father, His name. His name represented His character. And this name is inscribed in the foreheads during the sealing time of the 144,000. Let's come over to Exodus chapter 28, verses 36 to 38. Exodus. 28 <clears throat> Exodus 28 verses 36 to 38 And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the engravings of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be, 
And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts and it shall be always upon his forehead but that they may be accepted before the Lord. The high priest in the Old Testament had something upon his forehead. What was that? A engraving entitled Holiness to the Lord. And this is a representation of Christ and his followers, a holy priesthood as we read in the Bible. They are to have in their foreheads holiness unto the Lord. They are taken through the process of sanctification with Jesus until the holiness of God is actuating their practices. And here we return to this subject of the 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, reading there verses 13 to 15. And one of the elders saying, answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They will serve him day and night in his temple. In the heavenly sanctuary they will be priests. They are a people who have gone through the sanctification process to the point where they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They came out of great tribulation. What was it there in Malachi that we read? He will purify them by taking them through the fire of tribulation. For us, to be among the 144,000. The Lord Jesus is at work to purify us and we are to cooperate with him and be prepared to receive the fires of tribulation, to purify all those imperfections that we have hereditarily and habitually. You can see what is our experience as we are coming very rapidly to the conclusion of this sealing work. And the purification of our character has everything to do with the with what we have been studying about living by every word, appreciating every word, the, the Ten Commandments. Because these people have God's character, his commandments in their foreheads. Let's come here where they are inscribed in Second Corinthians three verse three. Second Corinthians chapter three 
reading there verse 3. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, remember what we read in Ephesians there, the apostles and prophets and so on, they are the ones that are ministering, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, the scripture tells us. And so, the forehead is the place where we exercise spiritual thinking. And as we open our minds, our hearts, where we do our thinking, to the beautiful gospel of Jesus Christ, we have inscribed there the Ten Commandments, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And as the process of sanctification has taken place, the 144,000 are set aside for holy use just as the Sabbath was sanctified, set aside for holy use. The Sabbath was sanctified. We are to be sanctified and to be purified. Let's go over to Galatians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 and see how the Sabbath comes in here in regards to the commandments of God and the specific distinguishing mark in the forehead of the people who are sanctified as the Sabbath was sanctified. That is... Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day, and what? sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. To be sanctified means to be set aside for holy use. The Sabbath was set aside for holy use. We are to be set aside by the work of the gospel to come to a perfect character, to be set aside for holy use, Sabbath and character development and purity of character is all interlocked. And so the Sabbath is part of the sign and the identification mark by which God's people are to be sealed. Let's go there to Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31, reading verses 13. Exodus 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Can you see how God connects the Sabbath 
with our sanctification? The Sabbath was sanctified. We are the ones that God is sanctifying and the Sabbath is a sign of that sanctification. We go on to verse 16 and 17. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. The scripture is the utterance of God's word. Every word that comes out of his mouth we are to appreciate. And here on the subject of the 144,000, the seal, the sign that they are his people, that he has sanctified, is the Sabbath. And in the last days, here are his disciples. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offence to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. So here is a description of the people of God, they have both the houses of Israel who are stumbling and falling and being broken and being snared, but here is the remnant. Verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. In a period of time, of the very end, when the angels are about to let go the winds of strife, the majority of the churches and denominations are equated with both the houses of Israel, the fallen tribes and the two tribes. And they all stumble and fall and are taken, but there is a 144,000, the disciples, that are true. They have been sealed with the law in their foreheads, bound up by the testimony. So, that is what specifically is dealt with in the book of Revelation. And if we turn there to Revelation 14 now, you will notice that the Revelation 14 angels are the ones who are so at work to seal the servants of God in their foreheads. Revelation 14 verse 12 through to 14 just before the coming of Jesus. Here it says, Here is the patience of the saints, verse 12. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. 
And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Now what are we reading here? Here is the patience of the saints, they that keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. And they have been, they have been worked upon, they have been cooperating with God in this purifying experience. And as they worked and labored together with God, washing their robes and making them white in the blood of the Lamb, even if they were to pass away, it says, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours and their works will follow them. And then comes Jesus in verse 14. What were their works? They were perfecting their characters. And they do not need to worry if they, in the perfecting of their characters, finally pass away because their perfection of character that they've been working will follow them. They were being sealed in their forests under the messages of the three angels. Remember we read there that uh, the angel was saying to the four angels, Hold the winds. Don't let them blow. Who was that angel? Who was the angel that was telling them not to do it? Because we, he says, we must seal them in their foreheads. The work of these angels is identified if we come to Revelation 18. Verse 4, Revelation 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plague. This is under the Revelation 18 angel, the fourth angel. Here is the, the purpose of their work to, to take them out, to take them out from among the fallen churches. Come out of her, my people. Don't, you are, you are to come out so that when the plagues are pouring, you will be protected. Let's come over to Isaiah 26. There's a very similar call here. Isaiah chapter 26. Verses 20 to 21. Come, my people, Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Remember what the angel was saying? Winds of strife, don't let them go until we have sealed the servants of our God in the forehead. And here is the call, the work of the angels to place the mark in their foreheads and to come and hide themselves from destruction. Here we have some wonderful help in the words of the spirit of prophecy. In regards to this work and who are involved, the angels, 
what the messages are that are involved. And uh, first off, I wish to read here from uh, Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 143, 1143, paragraph 6. It says here, she quotes, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Then she says, What are the chambers in which they are to hide? What are they? They are the protection of Christ and holy angels. The people of God are not at this time all in one place. They are in different companies and in all parts of the earth and they will be tried singly, not in groups. Everyone must stand the test for himself. So here we have the picture playing out in front of us in this whole research that as the sealing is taking place God's people are called upon to be under protection the sealing of God's law in their, in their hearts the perfection of character being developed they are being protected from this destruction of the, of the plagues and uh, the work of the angels we hold back the winds of strife while we seal them in their foreheads Sister White further elaborates on this in reading early writings in early writings page Forty-four, paragraph one and two. And she says here, she gives the picture of what is involved here. She says, oh, that all could get a view of it as God revealed it to me, that they might know more of the wiles of Satan and be on their guard. I saw that Satan was at work in these ways to distract, deceive, and draw away God's people just now in this sealing time. Did you notice where Sister White is applying the sealing time? In her present time, in this sealing time. And what is Satan doing? What is she? I just skipped the first introduction there. What is he doing? Satan was affecting the bodies of some of the saints those whom they could not deceive and draw away from the truth by satanic influence. And so Satan is working on all sorts of ways to try and distract us from the work of these angels. Now notice, I saw that Satan was at work in these ways to distract us, to deceive and draw away God's people in the sealing time. I saw some who were not standing stiffly for present truth. How are we to stand for present truth? Stiffly. And they were not doing this. Their knees were trembling and their feet sliding because they were not firmly planted on the truth. And the covering of Almighty God could not be drawn over them while they were thus trembling. Satan was trying his every art to hold them where they were until the sealing was passed, 
until the covering was drawn over God's people and they left without a shelter from the burning wrath of God in the seven last plagues. God has begun to draw this covering over his people and it will soon be drawn over all who are to have a shelter in the day of slaughter. God will work in power for his people and Satan will be permitted, Satan will be permitted to work also. So here we see the preparation for the close of probation. The sealing of God's people. We are going through it. And very simply we are told we must stand stiffly for the truth while Satan is putting all sorts of distractions of what we are to be concentrating on in these last moments to distract us so that we will not be ready when probation closes. When the, when, um, when the covering will be drawn over God's people. And what is the covering? It is to be covered by his righteousness. And when the plagues will be let loose and we are not covered by his righteousness and we do not have that perfect character, will, how will we cope when every hell is let loose upon the human race? So the wonderful work of God in preparing a people has been going on since Sister White's time where the winds of strife have been held back ever since 1848 when a world war was about to be released and for, for unexpected reasons it all calmed down. And from 1848 onwards, the winds of strife have been held back because God was preparing a people, sealing 144,000 who would be able to stand when probation closes. And if they passed away, if they died from that time onwards, which of course many did, their work will follow them. Something special will happen which will make sure that they will be there when Jesus comes. How long, did I suggest here, has the work already been in progress? How long, as Sister White wrote, even in her time was the sealing time? So it's been going on for a long time. Let me read again from early writings. And now I'm reading from Early Writings, page 254. And uh, here we read about this. Um, the third angel closes his message thus, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. As he repeated these words, he pointed to the heavenly sanctuary. The minds of all who embrace this message are directed to the most holy place where Jesus stands before the ark making his final intercession for all those for whom mercy still lingers and for those who have ignorantly broken the law of God. This atonement is made for the righteous dead as well as for the righteous living. It includes all who died trusting in Christ but who have not received the light upon God's commandments, had sinned ignorantly in transgressing his, pre his precepts. After Jesus opened the door of the Most Holy, the light of the Sabbath was seen and the people of God were tested as the children of Israel were tested anciently to see if they would keep God's law. I saw the third angel pointing upward, 
showing the disappointed ones the way to the holiest of the heavenly sanctuary. As they by faith enter the most holy, they find Jesus and hope and joy spring up in you. I saw them looking back, reviewing the past from the proclamation of the second advent of Jesus down through their experience to the passing of the time in 1844. They see their disappointment explained and joy and certainly again animate them. The third angel, notice here that, the third angel has lighted up the past, the present and the future and they know that God has indeed led them by his mysterious providence. And so here are a people from the disappointment of 1844 who have received the third angel's enlightenment of the Sabbath, which is the seal of God, remember? And as they receive that enlightenment, follow very carefully now about the work of this angel Early writings, again, page 88 and uh, there, paragraph 3. And Sister White was shown the struggles that the church was going through. I asked the angel if there were none left. He made me look in an opposite direction and I saw a little company, a little company, the little company of faithful people, a little company travelling a narrow pathway, all seen firmly united bound together by the truth in bundles or companies. See how that relates? They were all over the world in different companies. In bundles or companies, said the angel, now follow carefully, the third angel is doing what? Is binding or sealing them in bundles for the heavenly garner. The third angel is doing what? He is sealing. He is the angel who said, hold the four winds until we, the first, second, third and fourth angel, are finished with their work to seal the people of God. So we repeat that in another quote from Early Writings, page 118, paragraph 1, where it says, I then saw the third angel, said my accompanying angel, fearful is his work, awful is his mission. He is the angel that is to select the wheat from the tares and seal or bind the wheat for the heavenly garner, these things should engross the whole mind in the sealing time because he is the sealing angel. And so, for now, until our next divine service, I wish to just refer to one more quote from Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 1161, and there in paragraph 6. Just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, dash, It is not as any seal or mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved. Just as soon as God's people are sealed 
and prepared for the shaking, it will come. Indeed, it has begun already. The judgments of God are now upon the land to give us warning that we may know what is coming. And that was written in 1902. God's people in the time of the three angels' messages from 1844 onwards are the people that are con- to constitute the 144,000. And I took this time to help us appreciate that they are a people who go through great tribulation their character needs to be purified in the fires of tribulation and they will be protected from the wrath of God in the plagues. They are to be sealed in their foreheads through the experience of their purification so that they are settling into the truth both intellectually and spiritually. And my first focus here is spiritually. Intellectually, I want to spend a bit more time next week. Some people get excited about the intellectual side. They don't get quite as excited about the spiritual side, I'm sorry to say. But we, if we are going to be among them, we need to have the knowledge of the spiritual condition of these people so that we can be amongst them and then understand how to defend the truth that I will share next week. But for now, let us bask in the wonderful work of the holy angels who are settling us into the truth, both spiritually and intellectually, helping us so that Satan cannot distract us, working with us through the ministry, through the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. These are the hands of the angels that are doing this work. That we cooperate with them because we are now on the very end of this period of the sealing work. Not the beginning of it, the end. It started back under the third angel's message. And that started in 1848. So ever since that time, and we will explore deeply the particular intellectual details that are involved to understand where we stand and who these people are in greater detail still in the intellectual research of God's word. So until that time, may God's blessing rest upon our hearts that we will take to heart the things that we have been reading here which constitute the message for the present truth for my salvation. Very similarly to the present truth in the time of Noah where they had to get into the ark. We have to get into the spiritual ark today. May God help us as well.
sits still.